Well, our company was founded in 2018, although the story of ESS really goes back a few more years. When my co-founder, Dave Tucker, was nearly struck and killed by a vehicle on the side of the road when he was tending to a disabled vehicle. And from that, we researched this problem, found out that it was actually quite a large one, and researched solutions, developed the solutions, and then ultimately founded our company and funded it in 2018. And we've been working hard to solve this problem ever since. ESS's mission is to reduce the number of preventable deaths and injuries globally from crashes involving disabled vehicles. We're doing this by selling automotive technology solutions in the production and post-production markets to fill the substantial advanced warning communication gap on our roadways, and by advocating for policy changes that work in tandem with the deployment of our technologies. In the U.S., between 2016 and 2018, an average of 72,000 people in that three-year period per year were adversely impacted by a disabled vehicle or stationary vehicle being hit by a moving vehicle on or near a roadway. These are folks who have broken down, uh, perhaps they're out of gas, they've had a flat tire, or they've been in a crash and they're waiting for help to arrive. And while they're sitting there waiting for that help to arrive, an inbound car comes in, doesn't notice them until it's too late, slams into them and tragedy occurs. So out of those 72,000 crashes, about 15,000 people were significantly injured or killed in these incidents. That's about 40 people a day. So it's a large and growing problem. On top of this heavy human toll, there's also an economic toll of about $9 billion in growing every year in the United States alone. Our solution to this problem is to supplement the hazard warning system by providing you with new sets of functionality, two different forms of communication, one that's based in lighting and two, digital alerts that extend beyond your line of sight, beyond even the lights. It's these two communication techniques working together that increases the safety for you and your passengers and your loved ones when you're disabled on the side of the road. The lighting aspect of the help solution is based on sound human factor science. There have been empirical studies over the last several decades looking into what are the most conspicuous lighting patterns, colors, intensity, flash frequencies, duty cycles, all of these things that work together to grab someone's attention. The hazard lights were invented in 1951. They flash at a rate of about one time per second. The reason that they flash at that rate today is because back in 1951, 70 years ago, we were only capable of flashing at that rate. We had incandescent bulbs being driven by mechanical relays and switch gear, and that's what we had at our disposal. It was a solution, it just wasn't an optimized solution. If you increase the rate of flash from one time per second to closer to four or five times per second, human beings pick that up in their peripheral vision and it grabs our attention. It's part of our fight or flight instinct. With advances in technology over the past couple of decades, we have an opportunity to go even beyond the line of sight. And that's where the digital component of our solution comes into play. So what HELP does when it's activated is, is it actually sends out two forms of communication simultaneously. The lighting is activated and a digital signal is sent up to GPS traffic data that is then rebroadcast down to people's devices and even the head units in their cars, your navigation systems as an alert. So what you get is before you come into visual range of that disabled vehicle, you are already notified through your navigation app that there's a problem ahead. One of the most common questions that we are asked here at ESS is, why hasn't someone thought of this before? And the answer is simple. It actually has been thought of before. We use these technologies, these communication techniques every day to protect our roadway workers and our emergency responders. And it makes sense that we do that because they're on the road and they're vulnerable. I think what has been lost is that regular civilians like you and me, we're on the side of the road or stationary on the road itself every now and then, not nearly as frequently as, a, as an emergency responder, but when we're there, we're in the exact same level of danger that they are. In fact, I would argue that we're in even more danger because we're not used to being there. We're uncomfortable with being there. We don't know what we should do in that moment in time. We actually need protection at that point in time more than any emergency responder or roadway worker. Not because we're more important, but because we don't know what to do. So here's where we are today. We're working with automakers on global implementation and rollout plans to revolutionize the hazard communication system, providing us, the consumer, with the next level of not only hazard communications, but emergency communications. Now that doesn't happen overnight, 
But the good news is we designed help so that it leverages existing hardware and software architectures that are already in our cars today, which shortens the cycle time. This is primarily a software update with minimal hardware updates needed. While it does take time to roll any new feature into a new car, we believe that we can have this rolling out in probably half the time of your average feature. In addition to rolling out help into new vehicle production, we're also working with automakers to provide retrofit solutions so that you can take your vehicle back to the dealership and have your vehicle flashed with help functionality in it. Here at ESS, we're as much a cause as we are a company. So in addition to selling solutions, we are also investing a great deal of time and resource and advocacy to raise public awareness of the dangers to disabled and stopped vehicles on the roadways. We're also advocating for policy changes such as amending and move over laws to shed light on the safety problem and to educate the public of what you should do when you find yourself in a disabled vehicle situation. We're ever bit as passionate about our advocacy objectives as we are the deployment of our technology because it's the two things working together that solves the problem. That's what we were founded to do, to solve this problem.